Hello and welcome to the End of Slavery Summit. I'm your host, Corey Enderlot, here with Aaron Butler as my co-host and a special guest, somebody who is Mark Passio's producer. I'm going to have him introduce himself. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Uh, also, you go by the name of Afix. Introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, hey, Corey. Thanks for having me. Aaron, pleasure to meet you. Um, yes, yeah, sir. And to be totally clear, I am not currently Mark's producer. He's been uh, doing it solo this past uh, <laughs> bunch of months. And so uh, that's all on him. But when we had the uh, the whole live video studio, I was there uh, switching cameras and that kind of thing. Um, I've been um, programming for 24 years and uh, worked as a senior software engineer for the last few, just regular software engineer back till at least 2014, if not earlier. Um, and uh, Corey asked if uh, had anything to talk about. And one thing that I think is constantly overlooked, especially in our circles, is privacy and security. So, yeah, uh, we're going to talk yeah. about streetwise privacy and security. For, so for people who are kind of unaware or people who already know about some things, um, you definitely have expertise uh, in a lot of different things, because we've talked before about like a lot of alternative solutions. Like we talked about gold and silver. We talked briefly about like security and privacy and previous times we talked, um, but it'll be cool to go a little bit deeper in this. Uh, you actually sent us, Aaron and I, both a video called To Protect and Infect, right? And this was like, by a guy that you said is connected to Snowden? So, yeah. So it's uh, the presenter um, uh, is Jacob Applebaum and the uh, talk is at the Chaos Communication Conference. Uh, I think it's the 30th one, or, uh, Chaos Communication Congress, forgive me, uh, which is part of the Chaos Computer Club uh, is their yearly uh, hacker conference, if you will. And in my opinion, it's probably one of the best ones they have that happens every year. It's between Christmas and New Year's. And so this one actually took place in Aaron. I don't know if you mentioned this to you uh, in uh, the the end of 2013. And so basically, as he's giving this talk, uh, Applebaum worked with WikiLeaks and Laura Poitras, and they were basically in the process of getting Snowden out of America while this talk was happening. Uh, but nobody really knew it yet. And so wow. all the, the Snowden stuff actually kind of started to dump shortly after that. So uh, most of what he's showing in that talk are like the top secret slides and things like that are actually a chunk of those come from those leaks uh, and from stuff that WikiLeaks had, had kind of gained uh, from that. And so a uh, little technical, but um, uh, and he has been since me too for various other reasons. Uh, so unfortunately, you don't see many talks from him anymore. Uh, but it's funny how you see somebody comes out and says some stuff that might, uh, I don't know, put, put a, a dent in the armor and all of a sudden they disappear and don't give talks anymore. Uh, anyway, sorry, a little bit of an aside there. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think it was really cool. Like I, I watched all of it. I think Aaron watched it multiple times. <laughs> sure, right, Aaron? Yeah. I thought yeah, it was it's, pretty it's cool. Pretty dense. It's pretty dense, um, but, you know, he, he does a good job at explaining it. And there were just some mind, some of the stuff I already knew, you know, um, and granted it's been, years since that video has came out but um yeah just some stuff that are really really uh, had had me shaken a little bit you know it, it's it, it's angering as well that you know s some some of the people have this power to just violate anyone's privacy yeah i'll have it there for people if they want to uh get access to this talk it's free it's online uh and it's on this website that you said uh they're like a conference they do this often Yep, they've got tons of, so it's media.ccc.de, um, and that is where they'll have basically all the conference talks for the last however many years. Um, I want to say that back to like 24 or 22, and that was 30, so it's like even a bunch of years prior to that. Um, and uh, it's also hosted, there's different like audio translations that they do live for the German speakers, because it's usually in like Berlin. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much, oh, oh one, one thing that Aaron just mentioned that I think is worth keeping in mind this whole time is, or at least when I'm talking about this talk, is the stuff they're discussing is from 2013. So we're talking, I mean, that's, geez, is that really? No, I was going to say 15, no. Uh, nine years ago, I'm, uh, or no, almost almost a decade ago, basically. Yeah. So like, if it seems mind-blowing now, <laughs> it was really mind-blowing then, and who knows what they have nowadays. Right, um, right. So it's worth keeping that in mind. Yeah, and how fast is technology evolving? Um is humanity going to be able to keep up with it? I'm going to ask you some questions along these lines as well. I mean, I, I think um, <laughs> we got to be careful of technology so much as uh, the authority uh, positions in this world, right? I mean, because robotics, we can program to think certain ways and 
they can last forever potentially. I mean, right. This, this interview, uh, what we do online, does it last forever? <laughs> are, are you honestly asking that? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think it's, it's probably safe to say that almost anything that's gone over the trunk, like even phone lines back to like 87 is basically probably stored somewhere. Uh, that's, I don't have evidence for that, but that's my belief mm -hmm. uh, based on some of the stuff that I've heard from people that are much smarter than I. Um, and, and is and it true a, that like, things, uh, <laughs> involving yeah. the capture that i want to get there's a couple of things involving the capture that i i think come back to all that and that's some that's something that i really hope that anybody watching this comes out of uh out of this understanding um like i i believe privacy is security like and kind of to put that really simply it's like if no one knows where you hide your gold it's pretty hard for them to take it from you <laughs> so in that sense mm -hmm. your privacy is your security and i think it's a pretty good uh, way to to think about it um, and I have a couple other examples we'll get into that are much more recent. Okay. Yeah. I like that, um, that view of it. So security and, and the need to be secure. Cause some people will say, well, I have nothing to hide. Right. Like, Oh, like I have nothing to hide. Like everybody I'm sure has something to hide personally, Like they would come to some extent where it's like, yeah, they're, pre they're <clears throat> breaching upon my rights. They're breaching upon who I am as an individual. Would you want somebody constantly staring you down all the time, you know, thinking and judging you based on what you're doing? I, anyone who says the phrase they have nothing to hide, I would simply ask them. I mean, you get the obvious answer is what's your bank password? But the next obvious answer is then why do you wear pants or like have blinds on your windows or close <laughs> your stall door in the bathroom or uh, like wear headphones instead of blare, blaring everything you're listening to on a speaker? I mean, all of these things are are in the sense protecting our own privacy, like for various reasons. When even if it's just because we don't want to be like embarrassed or just feel goofy, it's like it, it's that is privacy and in certain cases like like in the blinds on your windows case that's also security so yeah don't you think it also has to do with control right it, the lack of security because if you can't if you don't have control over your own life and what goes on within your own life and what you see and what other people see then you know are you really in control of your own life tying back to the idea of slavery right are you thinking the communist societies it's like privacy um, of a conversation could send you to a gulag mm, i mean social credit and that's like another one. Security. Yeah. Another one he mentioned in the video is, um, you know, most people, whether or not their their reasoning for ignoring it is, uh, oh, you know, um, I got nothing to hide. Another one, it comes down to self-worth and people think, oh, I'm not important enough to be to be tracked or or to be, you know, totally, you know, have all your rights totally out the window when it comes to privacy and you know, a lot of people don't think that they're even worth anything. They don't they don't recognize, you know, what they are. That's a brilliant point. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like you have value straight up. You have value. Maybe you don't think it, but other people do. I can almost guarantee it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and whether it's just like the store owner, you buy stuff, a uh, pack of smokes from every week or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's there's there's you have value to people around you. We all do, I think, in some ways. Um, some more than others, whatever. But that's not the point. The point is that, like, yeah, like, uh, and and even if right now you you have nothing to say for it, or, uh, let's say, God forbid, twenty years from now, uh, you decide to be a politician and actually have a shot. It's like all that stuff they captured twenty years ago, that'll yeah. find its way back real quick. And so, like, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily. There's a whole like time gap too between when things happen and and when they may be used against you. Um, and so it, it kind of further, in my point, opinion, like establishes the point of like, you got to be on top of this. Like, you can't just uh, let it go because it'll bite you when you least expect it. I mean, I feel like with the Me Too stuff, that's a great example. Like, there's all sorts of stuff where it's like, oh, I didn't realize somebody recorded or, like Trump with the whole grab him by the whatever. And it's like, it's like, well, he didn't expect that one to get out, but it did. Mm. <laughs> it yeah, yeah. totally did. And there are people that to this day absolutely hate his guts for that. No matter and what, some people might see that as good, right? Like, oh, well, it sure. means you have to be more careful of what you do in your day to day life. But other people might say, well, no, it's like, why not just have fun and, and or, or uh, <laughs> be private and, and do whatever you want, you know, without anybody knowing? Because, you know, that is where the that's where the dangerous freedom comes in, as Jefferson would say, versus peaceful slavery. Right. It's not everything is just bland and the way people expect things to be like we live in tolerance and everything is this way and that way. No, it's like, what if you break the rules here and there? What if you say something edgy? <laughs> right. You're not as robotic. You're not as easy to control. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then and, and to your point with the, the, the founding fathers, is that standard kind of like, oh, I'll give a little bit of this up for more security or whatever. And it's like, oh, I'll give up a little bit of, like, yeah, it's like, oh, I'll give up a little right. bit of privacy to Facebook to the convenience. I'll give a little right. bit of security up to the whatever. But it's like every time we're giving up that privacy, we should think of that as giving up security too. I mean, I think they're, yeah. they're really synonymous in most ways uh, if you just think a couple steps up. Yeah, that quote that you, uh, that's right. There's a, there's another quote, right? If you give up a little freedom for a little security, you deserve neither and lose both. Yeah, that one's, that one's right on topic with what we're talking about, I would say. Um, and I, you know, I hope most, for most people, like you said, you kind of like hammer down some of the subliminal things, the things people don't realize that they do to hide their privacy. Um, but there's things that everybody, I think, uh, has uh, reaches a point where it's like, I don't want my rights to be breached when you know, I don't want my rights to be reached when some people don't want their rights being breached at all. Like, don't enter my life. Don't be involved at all. You know, um, but they, at least they have the choice, the ability to have that choice. If they don't have that choice, if something is being surveyed upon them without their permission, without their consent, you know, is that slavery? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, we're increasingly getting into a world where. It's like privacy extends not just into like your body and, and video or audio of you, but like to your thoughts. I mean, we're, we're increasingly getting really close to that where I'll bet you there's a good hand, like good percentage of America where they open up Google.com and Google knows what they're about to search for. Or maybe they type one character. It's like, but they Google has connections with advertisers. They know the ad that just hit the TV that they also hit them on the phone with or whatever. And it's like, they know what they just searched up on Android. And so like, they know what you're about to look up and then you go Neuralink type like Elon Musk. It's like they literally will be in your brain before you freaking know it. <laughs> so that's a whole nother conversation. We don't need to go down that rabbit yeah. hole. But I, I think it's it, it, it's it's thinking ahead. Uh, uh, that's it's, it's coming. It's coming one way or another, I think. Well, I do want to say I think technology is powerful, right? I mean, we use it to communicate now and to help share this information with people. It could be used for both good or bad, you know, depending on the user. It's just a tool. It's not conscious, right? Maybe we'll think it's conscious as it evolves, but can it ever be? I mean, this is, these are the questions I think humanity has to ask themselves. Like, is it true that technology operates through these crystals, like the quartz crystals, <laughs> like our screens and the memory? Is that true? I mean, uh, radio absolutely does. That's for yeah. sure. Because a lot of uh, people, yeah. you know, talk about how you can speak to these crystals and, you know, you do these rituals and you power them, and you charge them. And because of the electricity and how energy works in our world. Um, I, I'm not going to get into the crystal thing. <laughs> That's not my jam. Um, oh, yeah. But but uh, I, I did have like a little build your own radio kit thing when I was a kid. And it, it did definitely involve like a quartz crystal as like mm. the diode, I think, is the right term for kind of how some of it worked. It has to do with like the structure of it um anyway so uh, i was kind of curious <laughs> as, as far as the video just to kind of start yeah. there um general thoughts on it any kind of stuff that you guys maybe wrote down or had questions about or just that struck you as i don't know particularly impactful or anything i definitely um you know it, i think the scale is always um very surprising because i think most people think it's very localized and very um you know company oriented or entity institutional oriented whereas he explains in that video how it's all planetary it's everything it's not like it's just a couple you know ones and zeros it's the whole shebang and that's that's super scary yeah the the subtitle uh of that presentation is the militarization of the internet i mean that, that just tells you right now uh i have some notes that i just jotted down like he mentioned that journalists uh get spied on and they can get arrested for basically truth telling uh you know for finding things uh and for doing what the government is allowed to do <laughs> right and the nsa has 13 ways of surveillance and they use all of them uh people are becoming more vulnerable as time goes on not less and um, from nearly eight miles away, even with drones, the TSA can attack a computer. Uh, they can they can put stuff in without you knowing completely free and not, nothing. Uh, and they know about vulnerabilities built into the computers and keep them a secret. So like uh, Intel and all these companies that produce the parts for those computers, these, you know, 
these government branches and agencies, they know how to ultimately infiltrate them because it's a, it's a mainly consumed product. Like everybody's got Intel or AMD. Everybody's got these certain parts in their computer. So it could be easy if they each have something that they share. And, and yeah, that last one is, is really important um, to keep in mind is the, the consolidation of the hardware manufacturers. And there are uh, like there aren't open source processors, really. There actually are. Uh, Risk V, RISC V, is uh, it's actually like a templating. It's like a pro you can essentially program what the processor does and have then like an open source template of, hey, I have a processor that I want to make that are really good at math, but like maybe it suffers uh, doing language processing or whatever. And, and but you can kind of make these can like considerations or whatever. But it's it's open source. I can send it to you. You can go print that thing on a chip uh, or reprogram it or whatever. And that's awesome. It's not nearly as performant and obviously not everything supports it. So like there has to be software built to handle that architecture. Um, and for the most part, like people don't realize like their hard drives constantly writing errors. Like there's, it's just, con there's errors constantly happening, but your windows talks to the firmware and the firmware talks like talks to the hardware. And the firmware is just saying, no, we're good. Just keep giving this the data. And it's like, okay, back behind the scenes, it's like shuffling to figure everything out and make sure it's like, okay, we got a bad sector over here. We need to move data with the handle. Like there's so much stuff that, <clears throat> uh, and, and say you're working with a, a cloud-based instance, so you're renting a computer from Amazon or whatever, you have even less access to it. I mean, you, you really can't ever dig in and see what's going on under the hood. And so uh, and, uh, there's plenty of talks out there where, people hunt down these crazy bugs and they're like, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, this code on this machine acts really different and sucks. Uh, and then all of a sudden you, somebody spends six months looking at it and it's like, they end up having to call Amazon and be like, Hey man, can you just like move us to another box? Like something's broken here. It's like, Oh, actually, yeah, you're right. The network card was bad. It was flipping every 54th bit or something. It's like, it's crazy little stuff. Uh, there's, there's another guy who did a whole talk uh, on bit squatting a while ago where he, um, he it's like okay facebook's ad networks were on like fbcdn.net or whatever but he knew that like uh there was a propensity for a certain common router to flip the fourth bit so he would like buy like fbgdn.net or whatever and within like a week or two all of a sudden like facebook just by the nature of like routers getting hot somewhere on the planet uh instead of facebook serving ads from their server they're serving ads from his server like a thousand times in a couple of days. And it's like just these really, really obscure, strange attacks. Um, and we're not even getting into like hydroelectric dams connected to the internet or like ancient uh, uh, travel flight booking and hotel booking systems. I mean, like, like that stuff literally predates the internet it has never been able to turn off. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's still all in six bits. So like when you give your email address to hotel.com, uh, it's actually still like the at symbol is stored with two slashes because it's all in, meant to be in six bits for punch cards because they've literally never been able to turn this thing off since the sixties because flights keep getting booked and hotels keep. So that's a bit of a tangent, but like it's, there are these legacy systems. There's a lack of access, there's lack of control. There's, there's just many different layers to these everyday things that uh, are kind of hidden behind the surface. But when you, it, most of them, when you hear them, you're like, eh, that makes sense. <laughs> Well, what else? You, what else are you gonna do? Tell everybody to just don't book flights for a day. It's like around the whole world. It's like that ain't gonna happen. So yeah. anyway, um, uh, sorry. But I, I, back to, to what you were saying. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. No. That those are good points. Um, I would have a question uh, based upon like you were going into like open source stuff, and I'm definitely a fan of a lot of open source stuff. We can get into a little bit more of that later Richard on. Richard Stallman would appreciate that you're using Jitsi because it is free as in uh, <laughs> Libre, uh, not free as in beer. Well, it also is free as in beer. That's besides the point. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, so um, like, you know, where where does the line be drawn here? Because the, there's a lot of people going into tech, right? Like I know a lot of people who are building computers and they're working on all this tech stuff. And um, you're saying, yeah, they're doing it for money and such potentially because the market is heading there. Um, but where is it? Who is it? The, who's the people that want to spy on everybody and collect all their data? Is there something going on here? You know, is it just the government agencies? Is it just the, the governments? Why are they trying to collect people's data? We'll, 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 quiz, we'll quiz Aaron on this one. Hey, Aaron, what do you do after you have all the money? What do you use the money to get? Control power. You want to keep the money? Bingo. Bingo. Mm -hmm. You don't even care about the money. You just use the money right. to, as a way to get power. Yeah. I get the, the money is just a tool. Um, so, yeah. So it's not 
yeah, you can make a boatload of money doing it. Don't get me wrong. But like, I mean, especially if you know what everyone's thinking or like what everyone's last Google search is. I mean, hell, that's, that's pretty, pretty useful info against a lot of people. Mm. Um, whether it's just telling you, I mean, it doesn't even necessarily have to mean as a way to blackmail somebody, but it could also mean as a way to sell them something, find their, find your targets. Mm. You know what I mean? Find Like you can, there, there are, in the same way that you can be like, altruistically selfish <laughs> like it's like oh yeah i like give the homeless guy like a, like a cigarette when i walk out of 7-eleven so that he doesn't like beat me up and take my money or whatever it's like it's like i'm it's like yeah it's like i'm being altruistic i'm being nice but i'm only i'm actually doing it so my neighborhood doesn't suck as much um mm -hmm. and like you can similarly use this tool of control like information to find a way to give people what they actually want i mean so like yeah. there there are i mean it, it, i think you're Calling it a tool is absolutely correct. Um, and I do want to get back to the global nature of it and, and some of the subtler points um, sure. uh, in, a, in a moment. But um, uh, as far as how that's actually happening legally, uh, because that I think is something that kind of gets skipped over. It's like, okay, we know they're doing it, but like, what? That shouldn't, they're not allowed to, right? Like <laughs> what's going on there? Um, but, but to finish your point, then I can, I'll jump into that. Okay. Yeah, my next questions are basically among the lines for beginners as well, because, you know, there's a lot of things that I don't know about that I'm finding out all the time, especially from you um, about this. So like, what, where do people start if they want to be private and secure? <laughs> where do they start? Um, You know what, I almost would want to save maybe some of the more pragmatic stuff to the end. And then, cause okay. then, you know, we can maybe open up, do some screen shares and stuff like that. And, and I'll, I'll give you a whole laundry list of stuff to, to pull oh, wow. up. Okay. But uh, generally speaking, <clears throat> start by just trying to think like in your just everyday actions. And it, it sounds silly cause it's like trying to think about every time you're breathing on, on almost when you really start getting into it, just try to think of how many databases you're contributing to at any given time of the day. Whether it's walking down the street and it's like, oh, there's a camera looking at me. Or uh, you're open up your phone and you're hitting some website. And it's like, okay, do you have an ad blocker? Do you not have an ad blocker? Am I using like, um, how is my phone hitting that website? Is it over like the wireless, like um, at my house, which ostensibly my house controls, but obviously goes through Comcast or whatever. Uh, or is it going through AT&T? And is it, is, is it, and, and how, how many databases are you contributing to in each of your actions? Oh, I use my phone through AT and T to hit Facebook to then see some game uh, uh, that I got to from some Facebook group. It's like database, database, database. It, it is just constant. And and if you if you just try to think about it that way, and you just try to remove remove or <laughs> reduce the amount of databases you're contributing to on a daily basis, you're way better than most. It's like and and you don't even need to go down to the rabbit hole of like I, I have like a physical hardware switch like on my camera it's like a, literally a little plastic cover that's built into my camera i wouldn't buy a camera without that personally but if i had a camera that didn't have that i would consider just a little sticky note or what just literally anything i mean i'm sure you've seen that famous picture of mark zuckerberg in his office yeah. and his his computer behind him <laughs> has a sticker over the freaking camera it's like he knows man he freaking knows. That's like that's I, I got my mom to do it at one point, and I'm just too lazy in the gloom mess of the cameras. But mm. uh, but but I put my phone down. It's like yeah, I put something over top of the camera. I mean, it's like doesn't mean the mic isn't recording constantly. And that and that's the other thing. It's like oh, I disable my Wi-Fi before I do my Bitcoin thing. It gets even trickier there because then your Wi-Fi card actually doesn't need to communicate with your process or with your uh, with your operating system to tell it what it's doing. So if you've actually been infected with some of this nasty stuff that he talks about in that that talk, it's like your Wi-Fi card just says, sweet, I already I have power connected to me. It's not like that, like just disabling a Windows doesn't like make it not work. Uh, it just doesn't have to tell Windows what it's doing. So it can hop onto your neighbor's open Wi-Fi. And we've seen this with uh, Samsung TVs that people have bought hmm. where they say, oh, no, I don't want to connect it to Wi-Fi. And they have it for a year and all of a sudden it's updating one day. They're like, what the hell? How's that happening? Yeah, just hopped onto your neighbor's open Wi-Fi network and didn't update itself. Whatever, let's <laughs> call it a day. And and this could be like just constantly happening. And and you want to get really into it. Yeah, you physically remove the chips. That's the only friggin' answer. Which honestly is more work than I think most of us want to do. Because that that's where it's like really friggin' inconvenient. How do people are really gonna crack into their, their TV and remove the chip? And then with the injection molding stuff that he gets into by the end of that. 
you might not even know if they put an extra chip in the plastic. Like it, it gets so scary. Like when they like the interdiction while it's getting mailed to you from Amazon, NSA takes it. Boom. Uh, we're just going to like inject a little extra chip into the plastic, uh, then piggyback off the the power for the rest of it. And now that thing sees the rest of it, connects to your neighbor's open Wi-Fi. Chip shouldn't even exist. You'd never need to look for it. I mean, it, it gets so out there so quickly when you have the capabilities that these guys have. And um, to your point, it's like, it's not that we're, we're not all targeted now, but I mean, shit, the January 6th stuff, I think is a great example, right? There's little old grandma holding her flag up and it's like insurrection. And, but her phone data was captured three months prior and six months later, you know what I mean? It's like, and, and they're just swept up in this drag net because they were part of something that, uh, ostensibly they really believed in. And I mean, they're going to public property to protest the government at a government building. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, it sounds like it should be by the books, <laughs> but they are now part of this uh, massive thing that's going on. And so it, 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 yeah, just go through your day and think about how many databases you're contributing to. And, and even if you're just aware of it, you're way better than most. Uh, mm -hmm. And you will not realize all of them. I can guarantee you that because it's far more than most people can think. So, um, yeah, there's some things I want to go over for this um, based upon that, um, several things actually, but um, you made some really good points and I, I kind of want to break it down for a device perhaps that everybody has, like a smartphone. Um, <laughs> but like a lot of people will, you know, I mean, a lot of people might say like, oh, well, they're watching us anyways. Oh, they're looking at us anyways. There's no point well, worrying because they already know everything about me the, from the minute I was born. And like, meanwhile, they have like a fridge that's smart, a TV that's smart, a phone that's smart, you know, so-called smart, <laughs> all these smart products. And every single one of them is connected to the same internet. And then they have these smart meters that are attached to their houses. And it's, it's sometimes, you know, people don't even consent to it they have to put cages on it to block it like what is up with all of that it's crazy oh, I, mean, I mean yeah uh that's a bunch of different things um i mean the metering thing is is actually more interesting than i think people realize because like i don't know when you have an average usage of stuff and it goes up by this little bit when you turn on your tv down by this little bit when you turn off your tv um how well can they actually just guess what device you just just bought by based on exactly how much the power changes like in the draw. I actually don't know, but it's, they could probably get pretty freaking close if you spent enough time looking at it and, and really breaking down the data. Um, I'm not so concerned about it, like because people are worried about for like the health reasons and the EMF stuff. And honestly, I'm not, that's not really my, I'm too much of a nerd. I'm constantly, I've, if there's anything bad, I've been being berated with it probably within multiple feet for like the, more than half of my life and so far i'm okay so uh i, I wouldn't uh i'm not denying that maybe some people are more affected than others but i right. certainly don't think i have any personal issues with it a lot of factors um, yeah 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 exactly um yeah and like the 5g same thing it's like honestly for my phone's 5g it's but 5g has been deployed in many cities almost every country i've been to in the last couple of years uh like and city 5g was already there on my phone when i got there like so it's like people are like, oh, we have to stop the deployment. Dude, I'm pretty Elon sure I'm Musk was saying that uh, the EMF is just like sun energy and that people kind of confuse the uh, EMF. That's electromagnetic. Other... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So electromagnetic is not necessarily just radio. I mean, it's not like putting your head in a microwave because microwave is a specific spectrum, like it's a specific range of frequencies, uh, just like gamma waves are or, or whatever, um, or theta waves in your brain when you're sleeping. I mean, it's all just different parts of the spectrum of energy essentially right like sound is a certain range and sight is a certain range and terahertz and tetrahertz and whatever i mean if you really yeah. think like uh anyway we can get to the frequency stuff but i think it's kind of a separate conversation oh um, yeah i mean i have uh, a friend who literally very related. has copper wires he carries with him and he does detections of where there's energy and it will attract toward different energies i well, mean like the dowsing Dow type of stuff um, if you hear of like Dr. Emoto as well, I mean, this guy, like you speak to a jar of rice and the rice will mold if you speak something bad. Like there's a lot of people who have a lot of interesting theories built around energy. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm I was very skeptical at first being in the health field because a lot of people claim like, oh, this crystal is going to heal this, this, 
uh, frequency is going to heal this or that. But it's very interesting the more you look into it if there's connections with electricity. Uh, and the news is, is the weather is telling people what the day is going to be, right? It's partly cloudy. And everybody thinks it's partly cloudy as above, so below. And the principle of mentalism, they might start thinking that it's supposed to be cloudy. And it might just happen because everybody thought it. You know, like, is it easy for humans' minds to be so manipulated? And is our I, minds connected to that energy? I would. So th there is a relationship between energy. Uh, and so the I think it's the final slide of that talk. And that's, to me, one of the most interesting bombshells he just drops. Just like, oh, by the way, I got to go. Here's this thing. Is the <laughs> continuous wave generators. And that's just, like, literally, if you look into it, it's, like, straight up out of the last scene of, I think it's the Dark Knight where uh morgan freeman like he walks into the room and morgan freeman's got like all the screens up and he can see like in everybody's living rooms it's like literally that i mean you imagine this device in your monitor that they put in there in the in, like on the way when it was getting mailed to you and it literally is just able to bounce frequencies like radar essentially throughout your room back to your monitor which is a perfect place to do it from and essentially get a 3d like a live 3d print of your entire room and that is frightening but we like their own documents say they absolutely have it and it works. Um, <clears throat> like, and that's just mind blowing to me. Um, yeah. That's so probably I, as far as I would There's just so it. much we don't know yeah, about. <laughs> yeah. I, otherwise I, I think like, yeah, I mean, you're talking, there's some crazy Tesla energy we don't know about whatever. Like, yeah, there's that. I don't know how to protect against that. Uh, I can tell you how to like use Tesla DNS claiming you can get whatever. free energy out of the core of the earth, you know, to supply yeah, everybody no, I mean, with he, free energy. He did light up a light bulb, whatever, 18 kilometers away or whatever, like wirelessly that was in the ground. Like we know that for sure. Um, but uh, and some of the same concepts work with the wireless chargers that we use today. I mean, it, it's a lot of stuff is coming, coming to fruition, but that is uh, not my not my wheelhouse and not something <laughs> it's I would all good. necessarily uh, speculate on. Yeah. You mentioned a word called interdiction. Uh, do you want to abbreviate more on what that means? It, well, I think the way the Apple bomb puts it in the talk is if you haven't heard of interdiction, it means stealing your effing mail is really what it is. Um, I mean, it's basically it's on route. It's got to go through some processing centers from Amazon to you. Uh, they will literally take the package, put whatever crap they want in it, put it, seal it right back up and then keep it going on its way. So when your stuff gets delayed by a couple of days out of nowhere, it's like, hmm, how far down that rabbit hole do you really want to go? Um, and yeah, we're not a journalist in Syria reporting on war crime. You know what I mean? Like there's there's different layers of when they would really be doing that. But maybe you're somebody who knows that guy on Discord or you're somebody who talks with like, and that's where it starts to fan out. It's this kind of N plus one. There's, there's, there's the people they want to get. And then there's everybody else, but everybody's connected as we kind of started with. Right. And, and mm -hmm. so um, it, that's and that's where it kind of quickly becomes yeah they just drag at the whole friggin' thing um and and i guess maybe on that point um it, it it's so it, it's like how how do they get everybody right so nsa and this is something i wanted to get to earlier but i think we'll maybe kind of help couch some of the other conversation nsa can't spy on american citizens legally they're technically only supposed to spy on international citizens uh gchq that's the british nsa essentially they can't spy on british citizens legally but what can they both do they can legally exchange data and they can legally spy on each other so is exactly what they do and then so this happens this is what five eyes is where it's uh, uh the uk us uh germany australia it might be new zealand i feel like i'm missing the last one here Let's just say New Zealand, uh, but that's five eyes. I actually don't think Canada's part of five, but, but then there's also 13 eyes and a bunch of different ones that are variations, but that's really how it works is they all just spy on each other's stuff and they just hand it all to each other. And that's the easiest answer. Um, and then the same thing happens also like, uh, Google had a big battle with Ireland and Microsoft or it was Microsoft and Ireland. I think it was, I think it was Google. It doesn't matter, but it's like, they were trying to subpoena somebody's Gmail data at one point. And they're like, well, what's the jurisdiction? Oh, is it okay? Is the U S looking for it? Uh, and then and they're okay. Well, then they can't get it if it's on a U.S. citizen. And Google's like, well, technically, uh, actually, actually we use machine learning to move data to the most efficient place to store it on the planet. Um, so well, we took your data and we shipped it from the U S to the Ireland, and then it got shipped over here and whatever. And so just by moving your data to this other country or to this other place, like, because of 
processes that even internally are like, well, honestly, it just does the most efficient thing. So we don't really think about it. It's like, oh, it hasn't been touched in a year and that's our cheapest storage. So it's just push it over there for now. Like it, it makes total sense economically like why they would do certain things, but they're just moving this data around. And, and just the fact that it crosses those international lines, the data itself makes it all totally fair game. So even if it's data about you that's recorded by a US company, if they decide to move it to Germany and back, yeah, boom, it's caught. It's just, it's captured probably not just by one side, but both sides. Um, and so, uh, and and the other part of that is how could they store all of it? Well, Bluffdale, Utah is uh, where they, the NSA has its big old base. They started building uh, probably a decade, a little longer than that ago, 56 football fields of hard drives, <laughs> 56 football. You can see like pictures of it. I mean, it is a massive, massive data center. And so, okay, we're on Jitsi. Let's say it's encrypted. Who cares? Capture it anyway and just store it. And you throw it in one of the programs that he mentions is long haul. And it's like, well, maybe we can't break the encryption now. <laughs> maybe we can in 10 years. Who fucking cares? <laughs> we'll store it anyway. Uh, if they're really targeting you, they'll write something to just keep trying every number until it breaks it. And maybe they'll break it seven years from now. Uh, or they don't care. Right. And in 10, 15, 20 years from now, they'll be able to blow through that encryption because they'll find a, find a bug. Like that was a big scandal. RSA, the company that uh, writes one of the biggest encryption algorithms that we all use, like SHA-256 and things like that for like banking websites, SSL, like they, they got a check from the NSA. We know this, that this company that writes the standards for the encryption algorithms got a check from the NSA. Why? Well, because they left a bug in the elliptic curve. And so the same thing you're talking about, well, I have, they've got backdoors into the hardware. They got backdoors into the friggin' algorithms. It's like, oh, we just, why did you pick these particular numbers to make the baseline for this like encryption protocol? It's like, I don't know the numbers that work, but it's like this curve, if somebody knows how to predict it, they can predictively break your encryption. And, and like, so there's all the, like the exact same backdoors can exist on software levels as well as hardware levels, I guess is what I'm getting at. And then hopefully that kind of covers the general legality and where they actually could store it all, like just hypothetically. Um, but yeah, so encryption <laughs> is not all that safe. I mean, technically if they wanted to, you're saying <laughs> they could. Well, yeah. they'll still just capture the encrypted traffic. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't mean that there's not gonna be some breakthrough in a year that just makes it all moot. It just you know makes I mean? it, more safe than usual but not nothing is it makes it more safe the next safe. couple of hours probably like <laughs> is there yeah. any way to be a hundred percent safe would you say yeah, on the internet uh, no oh, on the internet if you didn't have that part uh i would say <laughs> well let's like, say you design your own internet. Throw everybody's phones in the freezer and people go to are designing house. their own internet right <laughs> Um, eh, I mean, you can do point to point. That's, that's the thing. Like they've got these point to point networks where, uh, like I get a tin can antenna, an old satellite dish on the roof of my house. If I got line of sight to yours, yeah, we can talk bit to bit, but like, um, I mean, somebody in theory could still intercept that in between and you're probably yeah. violating all sorts of FCC Okay. So rules. without the internet, <laughs> I mean, yeah, sneaker, way. sneaker net, man, sneaker net. It's like, you, you go a flash drive. Like I walk to yeah. your house. <laughs> like, it's oh, like yeah. a, Sneak okay. um, or dead drops. I mean, that's a thing where people will, um, you can look up dead drops where it's like literally like a, uh, somebody will like bore out a little hole in a wall and a brick wall and then like put a flash drive in there and cement it back in. So just the USB part sticking out. And it's like, you go up and you connect and you like grab the data, you leave whatever you need on there. And then somebody else comes down a week later and then they can, you can trade data that way. And it never had to be in the same place at the same time. I and mean, that's what there's, there are many different ways that people have figured out how to do it, but. I mean, honestly, snail mail is more protected than most stuff, uh, oddly enough. And then like landlines are much more protected than even cell phones uh, for various different reasons. Um, and, and that's how a lot of this stuff gets like kind of backdoored legally is it's like, well, you gave the data to Verizon voluntarily. So why can't we just get the data to, from Verizon? They don't even need to get it from you. Quote unquote. So there's all that kind of stuff. in between. Um, so snail mail. Interesting. <laughs> it, is, it is surprisingly more protected. Um, I'm not saying. Yeah, more. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, whatever. It's interdiction, obviously. So it's like, it, it's the, it's like, it's just different. Um, hmm. There's, they're not injecting a, a, a microphone in your letter. So <laughs> everybody has a smartphone. Okay. And we can go, uh, you can share your screen soon for uh, the computer stuff to share resources. But let's say, let's talk about smartphones because everybody has that. Not everybody has a computer nowadays. And there's a lot of people who have smartphones. 
what is it that they can do? Let's say they're Apple or Android. Maybe it's different between the two. Um, I hear that Apple's more secure and Android, you could just do more things. <laughs> I'm not sure. They're both probably not that great. Um, but let's say people have those two options, which unfortunately, I think there should be more options than that. And there are some, um, but we can go into that later. Uh, what do you think people should do if they have an Apple or Android? What, what's like some programs you recommend or what have you? Um, software ain't gonna save you there, honestly. Okay. Um, basically, just assume the mic's always recording and the cameras are always record, like being tapped. Mm, you gotta go um, in with that assumption. Just assume that's the case. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have like a hardcore conversation. I'm not even talking about like hiding the bodies, but like, hell, if it's a, a crazy idea or whatever. I mean, like honestly, you, like that's a fun little experiment. Is is like just keep your phone in a different room for like a week and, and try to actually not have microphones near you when you're talking with people or whatever. Like, obviously it's way tougher. And I mean, especially in the lockdown land of the last couple of years where it's all freaking online. I mean, that's probably going to be a daily data for these guys, but also like just in your day-to-day -day conversations around the house or whatever, and like, see how that changes the ads that you're served and things like that. Um, I mean, like, I would be kind of surprised if you don't notice any difference. Um, uh, I, I think Ari Shafir, the comedian <clears throat> for a while, he like, he like went, he had like a Google account and he like only looked up like puppies for like, I don't know, a good month or whatever. And so it's like for the rest, basically until now, it's like years later, it's like, he's just constantly <laughs> recommended puppy videos and it's like, yeah, it's simple. It's obvious that that's the case, yeah. but like, YouTube, I think you can definitely see it. You, you click a video and the algorithm just. Of course, they want to keep you on. I mean, it makes plenty of sense why they, that all happens. Um, and I, I, so, I mean, I, more on the security end than the privacy end, get a good ad blocker. Uh, on Apple, unfortunately, there are no uh, browser plugins allowed at all on any browser on iPhone, which to me is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but uh, on Android, if you have Firefox, you can get plugins. You can't get them on Chrome anymore. They got rid of that on mobile Chrome, at least. Um, but Firefox on Android, you can get uBlock Origin, uh, uh, Privacy Badger, uh, HTTPS everywhere. You kind of don't need anymore. But I what about like anyway. Brave and Vivaldi browsers? <sighs> Chrome based. No oh, OK. So you can't get, in my opinion, the better ad blockers. Uh, and there's also other stuff like, like sponsor block is just kind of a convenience thing that I freaking love where it's like ads in like in the middle of a YouTube video. And it's like, by the way, this video is brought to you by blah. And it's like not an ad. But it's in the, I mean, it is an ad, but it's like part of the video. Sponsor block is honestly like my favorite plugin since ad blockers. It just skips that part of the video. It's so you're a awesome. Firefox fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I only use Firefox nowadays. And, and that's partially just to like, uh, like even Microsoft Edge is Chrome based now. So like there's Chrome and there's Firefox. And so unless we want to all be under Google's purview, somebody's got to use Firefox. Um, well, Chromium is open going. sourced, is it not? It's still run by Google. And uh, okay. then there's like, so there's like more hardcore privacy versions of Chromium, like Iridium, uh, which actually tell you, it's like the first time you start typing in a text box. It's like, hey, by the way, it was about to go to Google server to get the spell check <laughs> dictionary, right? It's got to do this stuff. It has to come from somewhere. And so you don't think of it, well, it's, it, it, with Chromium, yes, there actually still are quite a few little pieces, like exactly okay. like that, where it's hitting Google. And like you type one character and I mean, maybe it's not much, but it knows your language now. Yeah. Um, and and maybe what you were trying to spell check, depending on how that goes. I mean, even Chrome, it'll prefetch sites that as you're typing them in the bar. So um, just by giving you a drop down, it wants to make it seem like it loads faster. So actually like in the process of typing in a URL, it's actually hitting the site already and potentially pulling it back. And so like you didn't even go there, but it already hit that server and that server now has a record of it. So that's another database. Now, right? and, search and, engine, uh, what do you think? Uh, There's like search X, I think. Yeah, There's a uh, yeah. start page. That's they all like... kind of bounce off each other. I use DuckDuckGo because I'm such a big fan of the bang syntax. Where you do exclamation point, whatever, and then space. Okay. Things, exclamation point, AZ, space, uh, I don't know, popsicles. And you'll search Amazon for popsicles, whatever. But like, the I, again, I just, it, it's going somewhere. Somebody's recording it. And whether it's not, like the results themselves, that's one domain. But then when you click those links, you're going to other domains. So I mean, you're 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 giving it the data away one or, one way or Do another. Do you know and about if, Start Page or no? Yeah, that's it's basically just Google, but 
unbranded ish kind of mm -hmm. right like you okay. get the same results as google i think some people say DuckDuckGo is bing's results but i i feel like they're slightly different when i've actually well, duck, go apparently it. said that they would start censoring people right so i mean that's why i asked that question too is if you know any so they didn't so they didn't say that they would remove it which to me is like i kind of i think kind of overlooked in that conversation they said they would downrank it so in my experience if you still know what you're looking for um mm -hmm. You'll find it, and and that actually is another tip that that I started doing a while ago that I think actually made me much, I don't know, a little sharper maybe. Remove uh, autocomplete on everything, on everything. So okay. first off, it's sending every keystroke out of what you're typing. So you, hey, I'm typing this backspace, backspace, backspace. I'm typing this. It can like see your thought process quite literally. And you want every single one of those keystrokes. Again, you're not even looking it up, but you're telling Google, I'm thinking about looking this up. You're telling whatever, I'm thinking about looking this up. Um, I, th I think I liken it to, uh, if you use GPS to get somewhere, like, do you ever remember how you got there <laughs> as opposed to you took a map out and you're like, all right, well, I've, I've, okay, I go up this, this highway goes North, this highway goes West, whatever. Uh, when you get somewhere using a map and maybe that's just old school as hell of me, but I, that, I don't know, my family drove around when I was a kid and this stuff wasn't ubiquitous, but like. It was much easier to remember how to get somewhere when you get it get there without using GPS um, versus if I if I used some autocomplete and I typed in what is whatever and I just go with oh the first drop down hey I'm gonna see what everybody else saw and most people are dumb so they probably got the wrong answer already and so I'll just have the same wrong answer as everybody else um, and but B also you don't necessarily remember what you typed in to get that search result that that thing that you're trying to find again maybe a, a couple of weeks later but you're but if you have kind of a way you think about searching for stuff you'll probably do that same thing again and find the same results so i, I found it actually helped me a lot in terms of like remembering how i even got to stuff on, on the internet um so uh and and, and the same for like spell check that just that'll just make your spelling better <laughs> don't, don't let it it's like okay if it gives you little red squiggles go look up the word and it's like oh right it's this way okay and oh, maybe it comes from these words or whatever maybe hit the mm -hmm. etymology or something um and right. also you come out maybe learning a little bit more about it uh and I, I think that that's it's subtle but i think it is kind of uh the, the, the having every keystroke sent is the biggest privacy security portion of that honestly with the search predictions um, but then the other parts, I think. Are yeah, etymology. Uh, we we use that all the time, right? I love that. Uh, looking up etymology of the words, and there's a website that you can go to to find the uh, roots to where the words come from um, and how they're said through the years as well. Um, I really like that website. So uh, we have about like 15 minutes so uh, or so, and so I want to jump into a topic before we head into like if you want to share your screen and we go a bit more into action and stuff. Um, sure. This is a big question because I think it concerns our future um, and therefore it's it could be ever eternal. Um, Elon Musk, for example, mentions that government is a monopoly on violence, yet he says that we need to regulate AI and machines. And he also says that AI machines will be the end of humankind. It's worse than a nuclear bomb, but yet he's working on it. And but then he also says it's inevitable. So <laughs> so kind of uh, help me out here with what's going on. Um, I'm not asking for your opinion on Elon Musk necessarily. I'm asking for your thoughts and his thoughts, uh, if they hold to be true. Uh, if you think uh, there should be regulation of AI and machines. Um, I think it's impossible. I think it's it's it, it's as it's as silly as worrying about gun control in the age of 3D printing. I mean, it's just there's nothing you're gonna do about it. Um, mm -hmm. He's probably right. It probably will be worse than nuclear bombs. It already has hit uh, many different sectors. And I, I think uh, James Mickens has a fantastic talk on it um, with a title that I can't remember the name of right now, um, but it's I'll find uh, it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I can send I'll send you the link. Uh, I'll give you a whole bunch of links after this. Um, but it's we really want to keep in mind, and, and this is more so for the developers out there than it is for uh, everyday people, because I, as much as I hate to say it, it's kind of like, dude, you're floating in the ocean. That's that tidal wave comes, tidal wave comes. It's not, it's not really on you. You don't really get a choice. Um, or I don't know, rogue waves. They always scare the hell out of me. Like the idea of just being in the middle of the ocean, a 20 story wave just comes out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> that just happens. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, is, is we really want to make sure that things that are inscrutable, like machine learning and AI right now, they're even the people that are doing the work, it is more or less inscrutable in the sense that like you cannot scrutinize what's going on when it's got, 20 connections times 
50 uh, hidden layers uh, at unknown connections. I mean, it's, it's like literally trying to like slice open somebody's brain and be like, okay, well, what are the neurons thinking? It's like, you just can't do that. Um, and so, which means you can't scrutinize it. And so if you can't scrutinize it, it really should not be doing a job that deserves some scrutiny. For example, uh, sentencing, uh, like in, in legal terms, it's like, oh, uh, what are the sentencing guidelines? Like how long should this guy get sentenced to prison for? There's all sorts of weird, hidden, strange biases there. Um, same for finance where it's like, oh, well, what it, it's all based on an input training data set and input training data set. Maybe black people are get higher, higher, longer term sentences and uh, are less likely to be approved for a loan. It's like they're already using machine learning in this stuff. But if the input data set is based on a history of discrimination, essentially, that's going to come out on the other side. Um, and so and, and where it gets really like down to the nuts and bolts of people's actual lives is thinking it in terms of medical things, right? So, hey, I can give you all this data about this person. Tell me, computer, what do you think he has? Well, I think he has this. And okay, so let's cut this thing out or whatever. And it's like, what if it's wrong? You can't ask it. You can't really ask it why it came up with that. And and, and who do you even blame? Like at a certain point, the programmer, that ain't gonna make any sense. Uh, the the hospital, I mean, they're that they're insured out the wazoo and i'm sure there's you've signed papers that make that not a thing so like these tasks that need to be scrutinized uh like we really shouldn't let an inscrutable technology kind of pick where it goes um i i do share so hacking in my opinion i like uh i think it's stallman's definitions is just playful cleverness and 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 i think that's a great way to think about it. it's kind of testing the edges of the limits of systems like that is what kind of the mindset of a hacker is so it's like yeah we if we push over here we push over here on these different boundaries at what point does it break and that's how you find vulnerabilities that's how you uh i mean you can call it a hack to i don't know put your mouse but put, put your mouse on your your analog watch and now it thinks you're moving and so your boss doesn't see that you're away from your computer or whatever working remotely like all of these things like that's a hack but at the same time um we're not going to stop it somebody's going to put something out there and it's going to just happen i mean it, like i said it's already happening in all these different fields um in terms of do you think it would be better to have regulation or I, I better to have more freedom and to have like, more like solutions I, I, I think it's honestly a waste of people's breath to even worry too much. Like, like I said, in the age of 3D printing, it's like, what are you going to do about guns? It's like, come on. There's not, there's literally nothing they can do. Mm -hmm. um, you can, I mean, they could ban guns tomorrow, but it doesn't make 400 million guns just disappear from America. Yeah. <laughs> like the info is there. There's people that know how to do it. The data, like, right. and it's not even a physical thing. Um, and so it takes one like hacker to put the stuff together you and can't I mean, take it out of existence because it's so easy to be yeah you applicable. open sourced it you post it on a discord you upload a google drive you put it on github and whatever i mean like the vault 7 leaks that was something that actually happened a couple years later than um that talk and that was upwards of 100 200 pieces of software literally just straight leaked out of the the nsa and put on github everybody's got a copy i got a copy and so, and and they've got. That's one thing I did want to touch base on is is, and I don't know if you guys had any thoughts on this. What do you, what do you think of the names of some of the programs? Because I thought they were kind of really interesting. Uh, like like the X key score is probably one of the biggest ones to kind of see everybody's everything. But then stuff like Dropout, Jeep, Long Haul, we talked about. That's kind of the thing where they just throw encrypted stuff in and just let it crack forever until it works. Um, one I thought was really interesting is Common Deer, which sounds like Common Deer, like I'm taking over your computer, but it's spelled <laughs> Common Deer, as in yeah. a common like like doe <laughs> like a deer it's spelled common deer and it's like they're they're laughing at you like they're they're like they're you're the common deer yeah. and and there's a the common deer they say that in uh pirates of caribbean when they're taking somebody's shit yes exactly <laughs> and, they, and what, what are they doing they're taking your uh yeah. computer um there's another one called stoic surgeon in the vault seven leaks and then there's i'm pretty stoic. positive yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some really interesting names. Uh, just like when you grab their act, like the actual mm. like script leaks and dig into it. And I think there's another one called Pied Piper, uh, which is used to deploy rats. R A T stands for Remote Access Trojan. <laughs> and mm. so, and so wow. it's like these. Uh, there's actually some pretty good wordplay. Uh, like, and, and I think he even mentions Philip K. Dick in that talk. But it's like it is. Some of it is just straight out of a Philip K. Dick novel, where it's like it, it is doing exactly what it says, but it also is just a joke almost like internally because it's like how the hell the... yeah so pied piper i think one was called F fox acid yep yep 
Uh, <laughs> I forget. They I were, remember what funny. that one was, but I forget. But you're right. That is one of them. I think. Um, which reminds me of Metal Gear Solid Fox Die, which is like a whole thing in, in the Metal Gear Solid games. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, I actually nailed almost all of uh, the stuff. Oh, oh, one final thing that I did want to say that's much more recent. Um, sure. <laughs> that I think is on this topic of privacy and security uh, is related to the Ukraine war. So there is a bunch of people um, from Reddit that were like, hey, we're going to go help the Ukrainians fight the Russians. Uh, and so they, I don't know, they're, people are calling them the Reddit army. These dudes literally all went over there, didn't think about this stuff. They send in selfies and posted them on friggin' Reddit. Well, what do those selfies show? In the background, they see a little uh, chalkboard or they see some stuff on the wall. Oh, it's an elementary school. Oh, what elementary school? Within two days, they all ate a friggin' missile. They doxed themselves just by taking stupid selfies in a friggin' war zone and boom, vaporized like an entire, I want to say like 50 people just gone. Wow. And there's a couple of them got out of there to tell the story. And so it's like, there are real world like consequences to this. That's much more immediate than most of us think of, but they're not, we, you take a picture, you don't think about the stuff in your background. And, and like that can, those little things when you're in the wrong scenario, really literally might end your life. And then those guys cases it, did, it literally did. So um, I just, uh, I, it's just a, I don't know. It sucks. I, I, I don't think, I don't think America should have anything to do with that, but that's a completely different conversation. Um, but yeah, it's uh, operational security is 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 yeah. basically how you'd like OPSEC is how you discuss that, I think. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, when does security become slavery, you know, versus when does it become freedom? Isn't it supposed to be for freedom so you can do whatever you want, you know, feeling okay and trust your own? And that's the other end too. Do we self-censor to the point where we can't even like live our lives like yeah, like I, I'm I'm not advocating internet, and this is actually another Jacob Apple bomb line, Apple bomb line. But it's like I'm not advocating. Uh, he's also one of the tour developers, by the way. If, if that wasn't mentioned, um, uh, I'm not advocating in, internet abstinence. Like don't, but but just like uh, practice safe interneting. Don't it's don't like catch responsibility. Don't catch, <laughs> yeah, don't catch internet aids. Uh, like <laughs> it feels like a modern responsibility, you know. Like, and if you don't want that responsibility, then just don't use it. But like, if you're gonna take it, then you better be responsible for it. Like anything else, you're gonna become responsible for. <laughs> and what is responsibility? Responsibility is the ability to respond. And so, like, <sighs> don't feel bad about the things you can't respond to because you're not responsible for them. But the things you can, yeah, you are responsible for. And yeah. and like yes you took that selfie maybe you left and your friends got killed like dude that's on you like yeah you know what crazy, i mean and, and it's it's just wild um mm -hmm. and it's like if you don't think that at this day and age that like maybe you're just an american not doing anything that the american government hates but the russian government doesn't like well mm -hmm. they got they got a whole bunch of dudes figuring this stuff out too and so Would you say they're interconnected the whole world basically um <laughs> When it's advantageous, yeah. yeah, right. I think that that like they're 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 not stupid. Like they'll yeah. when um like uh, is it more advantageous for Russia to keep Snowden over there? So they can be like, hey man, we'll keep you safe, but like let us see them docks. Like who knows? Who friggin' knows? Um, yeah. So what do you think of uh, Purism? Do you know about Purism, the company? They they're creating their own smartphones. Um, it's basically it's like a they, freedom phone, kind of. Yeah. Um, is you ever hear, hear of like the Pine Phone? Uh, by Manjaro. These are like Linux operating systems. They made In their passing, own I haven't really looked into them. I know the Freedom okay. Phone and I know people talking so about like they're claiming security. They're things, claiming like, to use content. their own parts, right? So like no one tell parts or anything like that and hard switches when it comes to like Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So that sounds pretty good to me, right? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's that's the I mean, physical physical switches is the way to do it. Um, in, in security, there is a, a phrase where it's like, if they have physical access, there's nothing you can do, which is why I basically don't even have like passwords on most of my shit. Like, honestly, like, uh, like on my physical phone and physical computer, because it's like if they're already there, there's almost nothing you can do. They will just take the oh, yeah, they've got a password. You have a password to log into Windows. Now, let's take the freaking hard drive out and just take whatever they want off of it. It doesn't really matter. Like same for your phone. Oh, you have a passcode, whatever. Just crack it open. Take take the part where the data is stored and just go to just bypass that cart, that part. Mm. Um, it's instead ostensibly if there's at rest encryption and all this kind of jazz uh oh oh don't use biometrics ever that's another big one what's that uh, actually uh fingerprint face face id okay. all that shit cops love face id why do cops love face id because they can 
well, you're in handcuffs. They can just boop. They can they can still get your face. They can do it. <laughs> like they, and even better than that for them is it's not protected by the Fifth Amendment, right? So your fingerprints, your 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 face, publicly available and difficult or impossible to change. So they're not protected, uh, and and they're more like a username than a password, right? Think of it as your email address, but not the password to get into your email. Everybody can see your email address. You can't change it. That's just like your face. Yeah. So um, your password is protected by the Fifth Amendment, actually. Uh, you cannot, it's compelled speech. You cannot be compelled to give up a password to get into your phone that might incriminate sure. you. At one of the hacker conferences, right around the time of this one, I actually think it was a workshop for that, that one in 2013 that, that that talk was at. They were doing a workshop on 3D printing politicians' fingerprints. <laughs> and so all you needed was a good enough photo from like 30 feet away with a telephoto lens. And people were literally printing politicians' fingerprints from that photo, and you could use that to unlock their phone. I mean, it's, and this is again, this is almost 10 year old technology, consumer level. So who the hell knows where it's at now? Um, from what it seems is that it's, um, you know, there's a group of people who are trying to be gods on earth. And with this technology, it, it you know, for lack of a better word, it allows them to be omnipotent everywhere at once mm, true. um you know mics if your mic's always on you know i mean when it because i think about things like you know if, if people don't start fighting or becoming more conscious of this then all of your life's experience you know could be tossed into the hands of the government you know instead of you know and there might be a day when the local police you know have access to every little detail every microphone you know, every hot mic you've ever had, like, it seems like it's going to get to a point where the government is like a God, like yeah. has everything, has perfect all the data. For them. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect for them. Um, perfect but slavery. essentially what type of, con I mean, that's total control. That's, you know, how hard is it going to be to get out of that? Once, and and, once and is the it, fear of that, does the fear of that government. stop us from doing anything? I guess it's, yeah. maybe I don't know if that's where you're going, but yeah, uh, it, it's like we can't let ourselves be completely neutered, knowing that this stuff exists either. Right. So sorry, continue. Yeah. No, I mean, that that's exactly it. It just seems like so, so much more of a pressing matter, and that you know, not many people are actually concerned at the power this that this can have. You know, when you talk about things, you know, like like you said, sent AI, you know. AI sentencing and, uh, you know, a one world government where, you know, it's all a computerized government has access to every bit of information since you were born. Uh, every conversation you've ever had, every, you know, I mean, the, the potential is just super scary. Um, and I mean, that, that's kind of all I have to say. It's just, it's wild to me. It is. It is absolutely super scary, um, and I would argue it's already happened and happening. And it's yeah. like, yeah, back to before you were born, probably, probably back yeah. before all of us were born. Um, like I said, eighty-seven. That's that's kind of the number that I've I've heard like thrown around. And it's like every phone call, even back in the late nineties. You know what I mean? Uh, playing some stupid game or whatever with talking with a friend. I mean, yeah, all of that. Let's just just let's just assume it is captured. But again, don't let it paralyze you. Like you can't let it paralyze you to not do anything and not talk to people and not meet people and not use the tools to our advantage. I mean, the guy who made the car doesn't necessarily think of himself as like one of the biggest murderers on the planet. But like, yeah, millions of people die from cars every friggin' year. So That's responsibility. Um, I mean, it's it's not, you know, yeah. it's kind of inevitable if you have that type of knowledge that you want to share it with people and you see it's going to innovate society. But it's not your fault that somebody misuses something that you created. It's like a, a content creator like Mark Passio or anybody who has a large following and one of his followers does something. It's not his responsibility. You know, he put out information and that person decided to do something with that information, but it's not him. And, you know, it's like just yes. another person. They're in control of their own life. You know, they're not bound to the change of him. He, they're not slaves. They, they're participating voluntarily. But uh, and. Yeah, there is a game of chess, and then and then there is there there are I mean just like chess, like there's there's your move, my move, your move, my move. I get some data, I push it out there. At a certain point, is it even worth trying to take me out? It's already out there. It's on however many other computers, and so. But did you do that before? They like before it was used against you, and and so there there is a back and forth that is constantly happening, 
And there are really smart people on both sides of it um, that are making things more secure, figuring out how to break that. But is that there, there is a, an arms war of within security. There already there has been forever. I mean, they tried to ban encryption in like 95 or something in the States. And it's like mm. com computer people were like, dude, you realize that hurts everybody, right? And it's like, you, yeah. you don't want to break all of the security because then everybody's bank accounts are, you break TLS and SSL, like everyone's bank account website is broken. Well, and hopefully, that hurts a lot more, even them in certain cases. So hopefully they express their freedoms more. I mean, the, the, the developers, the people who develop this technology, they express their freedom. They're not just following orders and following what their companies are telling them to do or the TSA, NSA, whatever, what have you you know, telling them what to do, they're thinking for themselves and they're applying their consciousness because robots don't have consciousness, right? They don't have that ability to perceive everything and have empathy for other human beings. Uh, so we got to be dangerous with the, we got to be careful with this stuff because it can be dangerous. So let me, let me go on to that. If you don't mind, I ask everybody uh, who joins the summit, this question, how long were you a statist and uh, how did you break out of statism, which we talk about is mental slavery or the belief in government authority, the belief that somebody has a claim of ownership over your life and property more than you? Uh, so wh how long were you and how did you break out of that? Definitely the majority of my life, uh, I was a statist. Um, probably, so I was in eighth grade uh, when 9-11 happened and my friend's dad was the pilot of the second plane. Uh, and she was like one of my classmates, like that I hung out with regularly at the time. And like, that was probably the beginning, like, uh, again, I was really young, but like by oh six or so it had been, I obviously, uh, I mean, we don't, people don't remember like Google wasn't a thing till oh four. YouTube wasn't a thing till oh six. They had Google video and stuff like back then. And back in the day, you could look up crazy stuff and the front page had all sorts of crazy conspiracy type stuff. Um, and I had seen enough things probably by uh, 6, 2010, whatever, around Paul Revolution comes 2012 to be like, well, adults, like, why is nobody asking any of these questions? What's going on here? And so that was probably like the the the, the, the crack in the, like getting the foot in the door. And then uh, I voted twice total. I voted for Obama the first time and then I voted for Obama again. And because I, I was the second time, I was like, well, you can't get like elected again. So like, you might as well. I don't know, like legalized pot, like do literally anything. Uh, like he had made the wars worse. He he had uh, like was had the, one of the worst crackdowns on. I mean, what was twenty? So it was the oh eight election, and then the twenty twelve election uh, was the second time. And then Snowden hits. You have Clapper in front of the NSA, the head uh, head of the CIA. I'm sorry, in front of Congress. Um, I think he was the head of the CIA, not NSA. Doesn't matter. Basically, literally lying, like we now know, literally like lying under oath to Congress. No, we don't collect data on all citizens. And this all happens within two or three years after Obama uh, gets reelected. And that was where I was just super disillusioned, where it's like, okay, where's all that hope and change, man? Like, where's <laughs> what? What? Why aren't you did like, okay, you're out of here in a year. Uh, like um whatever twenty fifteen it's like you're out of here in a year like what what do you do, do anything that like that you promise do anything that sounds good and then uh, by then I was just totally disillusioned and uh, kind of had at that point found like the lark and rose and then uh, then you go down the rabbit hole and uh, I mean yeah you so I lived in Texas growing up and and you'd see like stickers on the on telephone poles for info wars and then i had like different people i worked with going on throughout times after that uh learning like more about alex jones and at that point i'd already probably eaten up like all of the ike stuff and eventually you find your way down to manly p hall and the secret teachings of all ages and whatever and mark passio's work and all these different things um and richard grove was like when i was a broke college kid uh he was probably one of the first people to kind of like welcome me into the i don't want to say truth community but like whatever community this is uh where i was like hey i'm a broke college kid and i can't afford your like access to your member stuff but i really like your work and he's like here just have an account like, dude thank you wow. and so next thing you know i'm on his like ning page with a bunch of other random people and they're people just sharing data and, and they're journalists and there's whatever and uh and you meet the i mean derek bros i is a huge inspiration because he's clearly puts in the work and I, I think like he's had his own battles but comes out of it teaching people how to like respect themselves love themselves be better help their community around them all these kind of things um 
Yeah, so that's uh, more or less it. And then obviously meeting meet Mark was like a bit of serendipity where uh, I was actually just finishing watching his natural law seminar. I was up at my parents' house in 2015. And at the very end of the natural law seminar, they're like, oh, by the way, we're going to be doing this talk uh, in uh, outside of Philadelphia uh, and uh, at, at this hotel uh, on this date. And the date that I was watching it was that date. And and wow. where it was was three miles away from where I was at my parents' house. And I was like, holy crap. I was like, whatever. I, I didn't. It was actually the last day of the conference. I just showed up. We gave a $20 donation, uh, like bought like a poster and like left and then just like met like Freeman on the wall and a couple other random people like uh, like just in the merch area and then split. But it was a weird kind of serendipity thing. Didn't really think about much of it wow. until a couple of years later. I was like, yeah, what, what's Mark Passio up to? Whatever, just internet searching. And uh, he had done an episode, like a podcast episode with somebody else. And uh, at the end of it, he's like, I need technical help in Philadelphia. I don't have tech people to help me out with the stuff that I'm working on. I'm going to have to end the podcast. And I was like, well, I, I, want, I don't want him to end it. And this was already like a month later. So I was like, hey, I hope it's an email. I hope it's not too late. Uh, but I'm in Philly and I know some tech stuff. Uh, let me know if you want to help wow. out. And he's like, oh, meet me here. Phone, man. And, no, and, and so I sent it to him. And so I sent this email. And he's like, oh, yeah, come come meet up. We'll, we'll see how, I don't know. It's not really an interview, but that's kind of how I thought about it. It's just like, it was like, oh, let's see how this works. And he sends me, he's like, oh, meet me here. And he lives, and it's like to go to his house. And he lives six blocks away from me. It's like, holy crap. And this is in Philly. And so it's like, talk about like a synchronicity, synchromysticism, and all stars align kind of thing. Not just watching the videos at the conference but also then asking if you need like if i can help and then coming to meet him um and then uh got obviously much much i don't want to say like deeper into it but had had access to be able to ask all sorts of questions and meet different people and and that's uh i mean it's uh it's a wrap after that i met you a couple of years later i guess and uh so now we're talking so it all it all lines up if you just keep doing stuff sometimes <laughs> that's beautiful man wow <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. I didn't know as much about that. I mean, I knew you were, you know, his producer sometimes, but I didn't know like the the synchronicity to all that. You didn't tell me all that. <laughs> and, you know, and like I said, I'm not a crystal guy. I don't get into the whole, it's all meant to be, it's all predetermined destiny, but like yeah. there's some shit where it's like, yeah, I know. and that's really, <laughs> really unlikely. Uh, and so uh, I can't knock that. I mean, hey, that electricity, I'd... if it's there, it's powerful. It's hard to, it's hard to understand it because it's how, hey, how involved and... it is. And even Neil deGrasse Tyson will agree that a child is far more rare than any star in the galaxy, or like in the universe. You know what I mean? There, that is, and and so there's, there is an incredible unlikeliness that any of this happens at all. <laughs> like, yeah, like it so is so it's hard to explain some things, right? Like some things that are crazily complex. So one in twenty-five people are, are psychopaths. That's that's four percent. That's a real number. Um, oftentimes they're surgeons which honestly you want a surgeon to be kind of lacking empathy because he's got to cut into you and think of you like a bag of blood and cables to really do his job you don't want to worry about hurting you and stuff i mean like you that's kind of comes with the territory uh similarly ceos politicians that's another big one and then um so that's four percent whatever then uh so there are at least a million people in the u.s with top secret or above clearance which that means if you're talking with a group of people that's as big as maybe 300 people 400 people one of them that's one 300 there with there's almost 400 million americans or was it three something uh i want to say is it actually probably closer to 300 million americans i don't know the exact numbers let's say it's 300 million americans but a million of them have uh top secret or above clearance and you're in a group of 300 people there are odds that the odds are that one of those people is able to see everybody else's everything so back to your operational security aspect as the group grows be more cautious, be more careful. Doesn't mean don't, don't do it. Doesn't mean don't communicate, but keep that in mind. Thank you everybody for watching. This is Corey Angelot here with uh, Mike Afix. Again, check out uh, his stuff. We'll have it linked and all set up. Uh, you also run a website called Jet News, right? Can people check that out? Uh, they can, it's a little outdated and definitely needs some love, uh, but J-E-T-N-E.W-S. It's a little news feeder aggregator thing that uh, honestly I haven't touched since 2014 but that's another project we can get into uh awesome. the important part is that i've been collecting these articles we have like 40 million articles since 2014 that'll be interesting to dig into one Very day cool.
Yeah. So thank you. Uh, that was a really awesome talk, and I hope everybody checks out all that stuff, cool. stuff that you can download as well. If you want to see a lot more talks like this, go to nita.one slash summit. That's nita.one slash summit, the end of slavery summit. Thank you for watching.